there's any future employers watching this video, I hope you know that this is not what I would consider business casual and I will not be wearing um, a cheetah print off the shoulder dress to business casual meetings. So I'm glad that that's been clarified. Hello everyone, my name is Maya and I'm joined with my pet gorilla Harambe and today I'd like to give you guys a little tour of what our prehistoric ancestors were wearing hundreds of thousands of years ago and kind of get into the history of prehistoric fashion. Now I've seen a lot of videos about the flappers of the 20s, the Victorian corsetry and bustles, the insane colors of the Rococo era, the wild poofy hair and leg warmers of the 80s, the dark emo goth 90s trends and the dreaded low-waisted jeans and crop tops of the early 2000s. But I haven't really seen a lot of videos ever touch on the styles and silhouettes of our prehistoric ancestors. So today, that is exactly what I'm here to bring to you guys, a history of prehistoric fashion. What kinds of hides were these people wearing? What kinds of jewelry did our ancestors sport? How did they accessorize with shoes? and fur trims and sandals and bracelets and necklaces and all of that fun stuff. Now, I'm using the term fashion pretty loosely because um, I wouldn't call killing and stripping animal hides so that you can cover yourself so that you don't die of frostbite and trying to survive every single day in glacial-like conditions during the ice age as um, fashion. But nevertheless, I still think it's cool to think about what our ancestors were wearing hundreds of thousands of years ago and what kinds of cool and creative looks they were coming up with with little to no technology available to them. So with that being said, let's hop down this rabbit hole and take our little time clock and dial it back 200,000 years ago to see what ancient humans were wearing in prehistory. First, I want to define what prehistory means because not everyone knows that prehistory History actually has a very specific definition. So prehistory is where stone tools were originally found and used around 3.3 million years ago all the way to the time right before when formal writing systems were invented which is around 5,000 years ago because this is the time when we see a lot of cultures adapting written languages but note that not every culture came up with and was using a written language by around 5,000 years. So the end of prehistory is a little bit different depending on what culture you decide to study but in this case I'm just deciding to use a ballpark of around 5,000 because this is when a lot of cultures started adopting a written language. So prehistory spans 3.3 million years ago to the first use of written language by anatomically modern humans. Now the first evidence that we have for when humans started wearing clothes actually comes from 170,000 years ago and it's not actually clothes. So one thing to note about clothes or in this case, the animal hides and furs that a lot of our anatomically modern human ancestors were wearing actually decompose really quickly and don't survive long in the fossil record. So we rarely ever actually find garments or clothes from this long ago just because the likelihood of them surviving is next to impossible. But we do have evidence in the form of clothing lice. So lice have always been a part of our existence. We've always uh, had lice, whether it's in our hair, but a bunch of geneticists actually calculated the date of divergence for when clothing lice diverged from head lice because clothing lice is actually genetically different from head lice. And so theoretically, when these two species of lice diverged, that is an indication that humans would have started wearing clothing. So basically these researchers were able to figure out that clothing lice diverged from head lice at least 83,000 years ago and as early as 170,000 years ago. So this is our first kind of semi-tangible evidence for when we think humans started wearing clothes. Note that this date could be pushed back way earlier, but we won't really ever know because there isn't any clothing that has survived that long in our fossil record. So our next evidence that human beings started wearing clothing actually comes from 120,000 to 90,000 years ago from a cave in Spain. Basically, a bunch of bone tools were discovered in this cave that show that humans were kind of modeling and fashioning bones to kind of use them as end scrapers. And end scrapers are these stone tools that kind of strip all the flesh and guts from animals, leaving 
using just the hide that humans would then wear as protection from glacial temperatures. So these kind of spatula-like stone tools were made from the ribs of foxes in this cave. And in order to create this kind of stone tool, the rib of the animal had to be dislocated and taken out. The rib was split in half. It was then reduced in size. And then it was shaped by another stone tool and then used to kind of scrape the guts out of an animal so that you could put it on yourself and wear it like a nice new coat. This discovery of these bone tools that date back to 120,000 years ago, modern humans were basically already making sewn tools for the purpose of making animal hides to use as clothing. Now around 78,000 years ago, we also see spatula-like bone tools for processing animal hides in caves in South Africa. And 61,000 years ago, we also get the discovery of bone needles in South Africa as well. Now bone needles were basically what you think bones that had been fashioned into needles where vegetable or animal fibers were threaded through and used to sew and make more complex clothing. Around 40,000 to 30,000 years ago, we find even more bone needles in caves across Eurasia and China. And around 10,000 years ago, the oldest pair of shoes was actually found. These shoes were actually found in a cave in Oregon and they were woven from tree bark. 10,000 years ago is also around the time where we see the first use of wool from domesticated sheep to use as clothes. Around 7,500 to 5,700,000 years ago, in a settlement called Chatahoyuk in Turkey, we find that humans were actually dyeing their clothes because of the presence of ochre, which is like a reddish-like pigment that we've been using for thousands of years to dye our clothes. So this is where we kind of get our first evidence of the fact that we were starting to make complex garments, sew them together, and dye them to create a variety of different clothes for us to wear. Recently, we also discovered discovered Otzi the Iceman, which is basically this dude who over 5,000 years ago was trying to traverse up this glacier in Italy. Because it was so cold, he was basically mummified and frozen, and so his entire body was perfectly preserved, including his clothes. And this probably gives us one of the best insights as to what a 5,000 year old human was wearing. So what kind of trendy styles was Otzi sporting? So Otzi lived during the Copper Age around 5,000 years ago, and the clothes that he was wearing constituted a fur cap, a hide coat, a grass cloak, leggings, a belt, a loincloth, and a pair of shoes. So my man was heavily layered for the winters in Italy, and the drip was definitely winter chic if you ask me. A lot of these clothes, like the cap and the coat and leggings, constituted many different pieces that had been sewn together, evidence of the fact that he was wearing complex clothing that had been stitched together. The stitching was made out of animal sinew and grasses. The fur cape was made out of a bear hide, and the clothing looked like it had been repaired several times over and over again so that it could be worn throughout his life. The inner shoes were composed of a grass-like netting and the outer part of the shoe was made out of a leather or fur-like material. So clearly the goal wasn't really to look stylish but more to keep warm during the cold seasons and also have clothes that you could wear for an entire lifetime instead of just being used and thrown out like many fast fashion brands today. <laughs> she and Sorry. 4,000 years ago, we get the appearance of some swanky Egyptian leather sandals that have been used very lovingly and thoroughly throughout the individual's lifetime. And 3,500 years ago, we get the first instance of the Chinese manufacturing silk from silkworms. And that, my friends, is the end of prehistory and the beginning of history. So I'm not going to get into ancient Greek or ancient Roman or ancient Egyptian fashion because written language was already in existence and well practiced by that time. Now, the animals that we used to make hides from were usually animals like bison, buffalo, bears. Sometimes we would add a fur trim by using fur from foxes or rabbits, just anything that we could get our hands on so that we could use all parts of the animal to cover ourselves during the colder months. Now I want to also briefly touch on Neanderthals because they were also existing for some of prehistory as well. There's been a lot of debate on whether Neanderthals wore clothing or not and there's been a lot of hypotheses about this. The first hypothesis is that Neanderthals did not wear clothing. The second hypothesis is that Neanderthals wore clothing but it was very simple clothing. And the third hypothesis is that Neanderthals wore clothing and it was pretty complex clothing similar to or on par with the kinds of clothing that humans wore during prehistoric times. So some research has looked into this and while many scientists are still debating whether Neanderthals wore clothing and the extent of how complex this clothing was, we do have some evidence to suggest that they did wear simple clothing such as capes that didn't require sewing 
stitching or bone awls to kind of poke holes into the hides, but just kind of simple capes to keep them warm in the winter. Now, Neanderthals were slightly adapted to living in more colder conditions, so that could have been why they didn't really need the heavy fur and hides and complex sewed garments that we needed because we weren't as similarly adapted to those conditions. But there's still evidence that shows that Neanderthals would have benefited from covering up as much as 80% of their body in the cold winter times by wearing simple cape-like animal hides. But note that there were Neanderthals living all the way from Spain all the way to Ireland and Wales. So different groups of Neanderthals probably had to wear different types of clothing or maybe not even wear clothing at all depending on where they live. And as for the types of animals that they would have butchered to use for this clothing, they probably would have used deer. Now there's also evidence that Neanderthals accessorized and sported some jewelry. White eagle talons were discovered in a cave in Croatia and dated to 130,000 years ago and designated to belong to Neanderthals. And these talons had been cut and grooved in a way so that they could be used as symbolic items of jewelry. In fact, there's been plenty of evidence that Neanderthals accessorized, evidenced by feathers, raptor talons, and shells that were used as pendants. Another site in modern day Spain, dated to around 50,000 years ago, found the presence of seashells that had been perforated so that they could have been strung on a string and be worn as a nice necklace. So there is some evidence that Neanderthals were accessorizing and they could have even worn some basic cape-like clothing to protect themselves from the cold temperatures of the Paleolithic. And with that, that brings me to the end of what prehistoric fashion looked like for humans as well as Neanderthals. What I think is even more interesting about prehistoric times is that these humans weren't trying to be fashionable, they weren't trying to be stylish, they weren't trying to follow trends, they were just trying to survive day in and day out without getting killed by insane woolly mammoths or saber-toothed tigers or freeze over by glacial temperatures during an ice age or melt to death. The focus was on survival. At the end of the day, clothing played a big part in our survival. Humans were never really adapted for the extreme glacial conditions that they had to deal with for thousands of years and making and processing these animal hides and sewing these complex garments was one of the reasons why we were able to survive these extreme temperatures and eventually go on in history and become successful. Without the creation of these garments, who knows if we would have even been able to survive past prehistory. I think it's really important to not only study fashion from a kind of stylistic and trend-focused lens, but also a practical lens. The clothes that these prehistoric humans wore were not simply just clothes that they used and threw away when it was no longer stylish. These were pieces that these humans wore for their entire lives and repaired numerous times and probably passed down from family member to family member. And I think in a sense that that's kind of beautiful. It definitely puts our world today of fast fashion, sweatshops, poor working conditions, and the cycle of buying and throwing out clothing into perspective. Anyways, that's enough of a rant on fast fashion. I have way too many thoughts on that to count. If you guys have any interesting questions or topics about human evolution or human history that you're interested about, please let me know and I would love to do another deep dive or make another video about cool things about our history that I find fascinating. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Now, me and Harambe are going to practice making some stone tools. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you're interested in my content, please subscribe and follow for more and I will see you again very soon. Bye!